Emily Clark, Emily Clark to the stage. Yes. Hello, hello students. I just got my call from the stage manager and so I am here. I have made a stage in my house. See? Now, usually the stage isn't made up of nine different boxes and it's usually not this small either, but for our purposes today, it's really gonna help us out because we're gonna be learning about the different areas of the stage. Each part of the stage has a different name and it's really important that you know these names because your director is gonna know them. Imagine that we're at school, we're at the Sierra Madre Middle School or Elementary School Auditorium, that big beautiful stage with the curtains on the side. This is not to scale, it's just with blue tape, but this is gonna help you out. So as we're doing this, you can watch me or you can look at the areas of the proscenium stage worksheet that I assigned for you. I am standing right now in the dead center of the stage, right in the middle of the stage. And this is called center stage. And center stage, you're gonna abbreviate with the letter C, okay? You don't always have to write down center stage, center stage. I stand center stage, that's a good tongue twister. There are four other really important areas of the stage that you need to know. There's stage right, stage left, downstage, and upstage. So let's imagine that you are the audience and I am the actor on stage. So if you had to guess, which side of the stage do you think is stage right? If you said this side of the stage, you are wrong because it is this side of the stage. I am stage right right now. And the way you know that is because you go off of the actor's right hand, not the audience's right hand. So if this is stage right, then this over here must be stage left. So we have right, center, left. Now, we have upstage and downstage. Which part of the stage do you think is upstage? Is it here or is it there? I'm upstage now. Yes, upstage is the farthest away you can get from the audience. And downstage is the closest you can get to the audience. Why is that? Well, remember how we talked about how the Greeks invented theater? Well, during William Shakespeare's time in the 1500s, 1600s, theater was a really big thing in England and they created a new development. They made it so that the stage tilted up in the back. So if you're a little actor right here in the front of the stage, ah, if you went upstage, you were literally up. And that's because the audience was usually standing really close to the stage. They didn't really have seating right in the front. It was the cheapest seats were just you standing right up front. And so if people were upstage like this, it was really hard to see them. But if you tilted the stage up, it'd be easier. That's what we call a raked stage. Okay, so we have downstage and upstage. So now we can use downstage, upstage, stage right, stage left to break this down even more. So as I said at the beginning, I am standing center stage in the middle of the stage. But what if I wanted to come closer to the audience downstage? Well, I would take one step down. I'm still in the center. So now I am what we call downstage center or DC, okay? Downstage center. Now, if I wanted to go to the right, remember right is this way, my right. I am still downstage, but rather than being center, I am downstage right, or DR. Downstage right, downstage center. So what do you think this last box is? That's right, we are downstage left, okay? So we should have this whole row figured out. Downstage left, Downstage center, downstage right. I'm gonna go back to center stage now. Okay, and now I'm gonna go upstage. I bet we can guess kind of how this is gonna work, right? If I take one step upstage, I will be upstage center, okay? How would we abbreviate that? UC, that's right, upstage center. If I wanted to go to the left, right here where this lovely curtain is, I would be upstage left, abbreviated with UL, okay? So I bet you're figuring this out now, right? Upstage left, upstage center, and now I am upstage right, okay? Only two boxes left, right? Correct? 
<laughs> okay, so these are really easy. They're in the center, they're in the middle. So all you have to know is stage right. You can also call it right center or center right. And stage left or left center, center left. I'll accept them all. So right now you should have a pretty good idea of what these nine positions are. So let's pretend I'm an actor. Hmm. And my director says, Emily, we need you to enter stage left and cross down right. So I know I'm gonna enter from this side of the stage and I am going to cross or make a movement right to this block. Let's say my director wanted to give me another direction. Upstage left. You know where to go? And I'm upstage left. So you should have the clues now. You should have the keys of how to decipher this whole stage. What you also need to know is that the audience has some terms too. Not only do we call it the audience, we tend to call it the house. If you're looking from the house where the camera is, you are allowed to go by your right and left. So we say house right and house left. So stage right is house left, your left hand. I know it's confusing. Stage left is house right. Uh, that's important to know because my director might tell me to come in from the house like this. Emily, we need you to enter from house right, crossing upstage right. So let's talk body positions. Body positions on stage are really weird because they're kind of unnatural. It's really important that you as an actor remember that you are not doing this show for your fellow actors on the stage. You're doing it for the audience. So it's really important that your body is open when it needs to be. So we break down our body positions just like we break down the positions of the stage. So right now I'm standing facing you full front. Okay, both my shoulders are facing you. I'm fully facing the audience. We also have quarter right and left. Quarter right would be just like a little turn this way to the right or quarter left like this. And these are really important when you're having a conversation with someone on stage. Because if I'm talking to someone on stage, I don't want to be talking like this. I want to be talking like this. It's clear that I'm looking at someone, but my body is still open. So I'm standing quarter left or quarter right. You also might need to stand on a profile. You know, a profile is a full turn. So, profile right, profile left, okay? So, left, quarter left, full front, quarter right, profile right. Those are the positions you're gonna be living in a lot. But sometimes you might have to have some staging where you're kind of turned away from the audience a little bit. These are not ideal, but they happen. For example, if you had to do a big dramatic turn, you might want to start full back facing upstage or being on a three quarter right or a three quarter left. They're good for those kind of turns. But full front, quarter right and left, those are going to be your big ones. To teach you a little bit more about body positions and acting for the stage, I want you to watch this little clip of me and my friends Trip and Gerald the Puppet while actually on a stage with a proscenium arch. This is a proscenium arch, Gerald. It's kind of a frame that separates the cast on stage from the audience out there. It's also known as the fourth wall. Well, imagine that the stage is one big room with an invisible fourth wall right here facing the audience. And the audience can see the actors through that invisible wall, but the characters on stage can't see the audience. And when the characters do acknowledge the audience, that's called breaking the fourth wall. Usually when you're acting on the stage, the audience is in one place, right in front of you. Yeah, so you have to keep your body open, project, and enunciate. Why Bloom go so far down stage right? Bloom no like Ula. Ula like Bloom. Oh, Bloom like Ula. Maybe a little too much. How's that, Gerald? It looks great. Totally natural. On stage, yes. I'm hysterical! I'm hysterical! When I get like this, I can't stop! I'm hysterical! I can see that. Uh... <laughs> And I'm wet! And I'm still hysterical! <laughs> yeah, see, 
in the theater, the actors have to pause for laughter. Otherwise, the audience might miss some important information or, in Tripp's case, some really good jokes. Actors also do something on the stage called asides, where they say something to themselves or the audience, but the actors on stage can't hear them. Thank you for smiling. That helped a great deal. <laughs> well, you know what they say. Smile and the world smiles with you. <laughs> this man should be in a straitjacket. <laughs> Feeling better? <laughs> I love that. Okay, so now that you've learned about the areas of the stage and about body positions, I want you to choose between these three assignments for your personalized learning. You can pick whichever one of these appeals to you the most. I know we're all different. Option one, you can fill out the areas of the stage diagram that I have provided for you. You can do it digitally or you can print it out, fill it out by hand and send it back to me. Option two, if you're particularly artistic, you can design a set for a show. It can be a new show that doesn't exist yet or it can be an existing play or musical. You can design your own set, and I want you to diagram exactly where these set pieces are going, pointing out the different areas of the stage. And option three, this is probably the most ambitious, create a stage for yourself and give yourself some stage directions and act them out for me. Some body positions, hey, you could do a whole monologue if you want, but I wanna see you crossing to very specific areas of the stage, and I want you to tell me exactly where you were going. Okay, so that's it. So get to learning, get to working, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye. Exit, stage right. <laughs>